scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I have seen the hand of God in ways probably this year more than ever before. I have seen the manifestation of His Spirit and His anointing. God has done so many things there is nothing more profitable for any man of god than seeing the fruit of your dealings and your trainings with god other people are living off the fruit of your work with god it's so consoling and it's so blessing let me encourage someone up front god is going somewhere with you be patient with him be patient with him this is already a prophetic word for someone don't, don't rush God. The thing that is coming upon your life is big. Don't, don't rush God carelessly. Are we together now? A cow, I think a cow is pregnant for 13 months. Am I right? 13 months before it gives birth. There are other animals and other lower creatures that the entire gestation period, maybe from a week to a few months, depending on the size and the quality of what is being delivered the long pregnancy communicates the quality of the prophecy you are about to deliver be patient with God are we together be patient with God God is working out something that is transgenerational God is working out something that for many of us will outlive the territories where he began with us from this is how mighty men were raised sometimes it can be frustratingly long but just wait with god he said ye who have continued with me not he who started with me continued with me are we together now one of the things that destroy people is when they begin to compete with themselves oh we graduated together with so 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 person now the person has three cars and i'm here just trying to press into god don't be foolish be discerning you must understand that the program of god for people is very different that person is a happy civil servant with his wife but there is an anointing upon you that is for nations the dealings cannot be the same are we together there are times god will tell others go and he will tell you wait Please, I'm, I'm speaking prophetically to someone tonight. It is important for you to see the magnitude of where he's taking you to. I look at my life today and I look at what God is doing. And I thank him for granting me the grace to stay with him. I look at how many lives are being blessed and have been blessed. Do you know people will reward you for waiting? Yeah. Yeah. Your waiting in itself is not a loss. You must stay and understand. There is no man who attempting to build a house will not sit down and count the cost, whether he has what it takes to complete it. This rush, rush life, please hear me. This life of wanting to do everything at once, it will land us in trouble. Are we together? There's a kind of fish that you have to cook it for a very long time. What's the name? A stock, stock, is this? No, not stock, it's stock fish. Huh? No, no, no. There's, 
I can't remember the name. You have to cook it for a long time if you really want to enjoy it. You can off the fire if you are tired and eat whatever is there. But if you are ready for a healthy meal, it will stretch your patience. The hunger is burning you from head to toe, but you wait. But you wait in hope. You see, that's the difference. You can wait in vain. Both of them look the same. That's what is painful. It is the end that will show whether you were waiting in vain or waiting in hope. Because those who are waiting in vain and those who are waiting in hope, everything looks exactly so. It is the end that justifies it. So don't just wait foolishly. You wait in hope. Hallelujah. Let me, before we briefly touch on what the Lord put in my heart to bless us with, I just want to remind us again and again, I will keep doing this as God grants grace, as to why we are gathered here week in, week out. We've been doing this for many years. And for those who have been part of the ministry long before Koinonia, in fact, for many people, it, it was every day every week laboring when when you look at people and they tell you they've been doing this for 10 years 15 years you're asking you mean this is how i mean nobody questions a student they look at you after 15 years and they say ah where are you now and they say oh finally i just got admission or oh, i'm writing work nobody says till now they say wow congratulations although the time is long but you are paying that price in hope. One day they will ask you and you say, Oh, sorry to tell you, I got a job five years ago. I'm now the director of the company. And ah, that little boy writing JSC. Listen, God is going somewhere with you. You can choose to end your dealing with him. That's not going to hell. You will not go to hell. But you have pegged the extent to which God can do business with you. I've told God there is no restraint as far as my work with you is concerned. I break every limit. Take me as far as you can take me. Stretch me as far as I can be stretched until I can carry an anointing that will bless a generation. Thank God for that which you have done, but this is child's play. In the visions of the Lord, I keep seeing it again that there is more. There is more. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, stretch me. Don't leave me like this. Don't leave me like this. I've seen signs and wonders, but this is not enough. I can't take what I have now to the nations. It will make me fight and quarrel. It will create competition. It's not unique enough. It's not distinguished enough. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Pray. you are praying Lord I will pay any price tell you something the key to being a real blessing is to be very anointed pay attention to what I'm saying the key to being a real blessing is to be very anointed Jesus himself showed us this how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth verse 38 of Acts chapter 10 with the Holy Ghost and with power listen then it says he on the strength of that quality of the anointing he went about doing good 
you cannot do good just out of compassion the problems that befall mankind takes more than sympathy there are challenges in the lives of people that need it. you have to move further than comfort you are truly a blessing when you pay the price for the anointing young and old listen to me i'm speaking to you every man of god i know today who is doing mighty things for god who is being thanked and honored by nations they are only thanking the anointing the price to have brought something forth is painful it's not a gift it's a school in the spirit and the semester system does not work like school here one course can take two days to finish another course can take four years to finish you don't have a system with god and say okay after a particular predefined space of time no you can be moving forward in the spirit and then just stay in a particular class and for two years you have not moved it's not backsliding it is the course content is bulky and you must be articulately trained now you can choose to think you are too you are too long and then graduate yourself the door is always open this lecturer does not close the door it is your passion that closes the door in this school of the spirit is students that close the door the holy spirit does not close it is wide open you can choose to walk out and say lord i'm tired please i'm, I'm grateful with all the mediocrity moving around and then you get angry and criticize others nothing will replace the absence of the presence and the anointing of the spirit i learn this every day as i have the privilege of studying history studying the moves of god and watching the things that god does through my life let me tell you the anointing is is a commodity of inestimable worth never trivialize it it is the secret of transgenerational relevance you are truly a blessing when you pay the price to sustain the ability to change lives to shift systems then you are a blessing sympathizing with people may help psychologically but it will not prefer solutions any man that trivializes the anointing is about to waste his time on earth i tell you the truth it has nothing to do with ministry i went for a meeting you know something happened i didn't even tell my people they watched that happen we came in this evening from a meeting i've been ministering in a conference and as i was stepping out by the roadside just to go to the vehicle probably they are here i may not know two families who came on friday for koinonia trusting god for a miracle of the fruit of the womb the husbands together with their wives and they were friends they decided to come and koinonia didn't hold on friday so they now paid the price went back to kaduna to catch up with the final session of the meeting this morning and when the meeting was done i think the protocol helped them i was walking and they came and um, they just looked at me and compassion filled my heart now whether or not i can solve their problem is another thing and his wickedness to claim I can solve it when I cannot you see let me tell you something if you love God and you love people you will pay the price for the anointing that is the only way to bless people I'm speaking to someone here here's a family experiencing this kind of challenge they don't need counseling they've heard it they are not daft people I don't have to tell them just go and see doctor so 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 and so I, I think they are adults enough they are married and they stood there and I watched the two women and watched their dear husband standing and I was standing in the middle of an opportunity that can begin a new journey for a family or brag like we always do as men of God lay hands on them and walk away and let them go back to disappointment and I looked at them years ago i would have been in i would have been in so much um um guilt 
because I knew I really wouldn't do anything about it but as the days have unfolded I have seen the spiritual synergy that this thing is a formula you can produce repeated results in the lives of people I caught the revelation of fruitfulness this year this year 2016 I caught it like a key and I said this is it I've gotten it there is a key when you search you will find when you wait for it to come and meet you you will never find it there's a lot of spiritual laziness we hope that God will carry the word and look for you no hospital moves around looking for patients the hospital is built even if you cannot walk they will carry you there there is a a unit called emergency but you have to get there I see people many times and I see that we're not really passionate enough I'm like a spiritual historian I'm searching what is the secret behind predictable results in this area there must be a hunger and I looked at them and I told the women hold my hands and they held my hands and I knew their wombs were open yeah not necessarily because they were under the anointing rolling I knew there is a level of flawlessness that you can step into as far as the dispensing of the anointing at that point you will know that you are a blessing you can see a man 20 years of misery and his prayer is to have an encounter with Christ through you and the moment they see you they start rejoicing because they know their problems have ended let me teach you something I'm still going to use money I hope you don't mind um, let me use money watch this I think I've taught it here the anointing is like money there are things the level of anointing you have can afford to produce there are results that you are anointed is not enough everything that needs to be purchased in the realm of the spirit that is below the level of your anointing can be purchased but every challenge higher than your level of anointing cannot be purchased watch this i did the teaching this morning similar to this and i want to use that analogy if i have for instance i'm not saying anointing is money but if i have a thousand naira worth of the anointing ejimi and if you need maybe 200 naira worth of a miracle this miracle you need is within the jurisdiction of my anointing to produce it are you getting the point now so when you come to me i will be able to minister to you and give you an assurance that you are going back with a result are we together but if thank you if what you need is um let's say a miracle the equivalence of a phone of fifty thousand, am i anointed yes but the challenge he has is beyond the anointing that i possess to solve that problem don't just say anointing is anointing you are joking how god anointed jesus look at the extent that's why he could do good every problem jesus confronted was lower than his level of the anointing so there was flawless results i'm telling you this is it's a revelation god gave me the reason why some things happen and some don't happen is that those that happen are within the level of the anointing to be able to release it and those that are above it so i can lay hands on you falling down is under this but the miracle you need is above it so you will fall down and yet not have the miracle are you getting what i'm saying now you can come to me say man of god prophesy over my life i lay hands on you and you fall because the dynamics of being slain in the spirit is 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 the is a basic dimension of the anointing it does not mean you received anything so when you possess such a dimension of grace such that the major problems of mankind is within the jurisdiction of your grace to solve at that point you are a living blessing the woman with the issue of blood if she touched peter she would have kept bleeding correct yeah but she touched a man who was dripping anointing from head to toe when you saw jesus you knew that was it 
if you did not receive from Jesus it was not a lapse of power it was your dishonor and lack of discernment do we have such people in Zaria do we have such people in Nigeria men that you can carry your trouble with joy with joy not with suspicion that the moment you land in koinonia before service starts you are dancing because you said the devil that did not stop me from coming here that's the end of it when people testify i am touched not just by the testimony but i'm humbled that by grace we have been able to stay with god and grow to a level where now the anointing we possess is above their challenges this is a very deep secret that many of you will catch as you grow in ministry it's working in me it's working in me it's god's ability god's ability it's working in me it's working in me listen you know you possess an anointing when certain testimonies start repeating themselves when you begin to hear repeated testimonies then you know the same way a woman cooks and before you get to her restaurant psychologically you have tasted the food because you know she's not going to tell you sorry today this year i'm born she's left that level that's why they put a price tag on their food you buy rubbish for 200 naira anything you see smoky or not you manage it because you know what you paid for but when you pay 10,000 naira for a meal listen what will make men leave their nation and come to you are you that important because you think your name is joshua selman are you that important that a man can let me tell you something most people say people are busy nobody is busy everybody is looking for solution if you become what they are running around looking for i promise you you can hold koinonia every day by 10 30 to 3 a.m in the morning notice the time 10 30 to 3 a.m men will still come and you'll be wondering are you not a government worker again and they will say the last person you prophesied to his salary for 30 years came to him in one year why should i want to labor like that you are not a blessing when you are not anointed i'm telling you this learn it understand this speak grammar speak hebrew words speak greek do anything you want to do if you cannot reveal christ he said great is the mystery of godliness christ is come in the flesh the world becoming flesh that men and women can carry their results a man comes here not loving god and hearing you speak something infects him he goes back and does not even know what is happening to him again look how long it takes people in the body of christ to adjust to spiritual things they get born again in january no passion in the atmosphere they got born again it's in november they now consider being filled with the holy spirit oh no there's no fire there there is a way you can step into an anointing huh the lifespan of your journey is one week in one week it will look like you've been born again for 10 years because of the impact of the grace you came under i made a vow to myself i said i will never go to a ministry twice to reveal christ there twice no no that you invite me and say come again it's like pushing a wall let's keep pushing uh -uh. I prepare my spirit that if God grants me an opportunity to come to your city or your area then you know something dramatic will happen can men come to you are you that valuable I watch people trivialize the Holy Spirit I watch people trivialize the anointing and then somehow they think the key is just to receive lay none of hands oh man of god i came with a seed of one million just lay hands on me and then you go to another one lay hands on me and it's as if you are shopping for anointing and then you bring it and say now i have what it takes you are joking you are really joking you believe spiritual things are that cheap i came to challenge you 
there is where God is taking you to don't 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 rob yourself of the privilege of standing before nations to be a representation of the power and the grace and the glory of God look at the testimony of that dear lady 4.69 you get 4.69 if it's cheap try it go and prophesy to somebody after this night that you will come back with the same result and then you see that it's not so easy the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference when Benihin came to Nigeria two weeks ago look at the rush look at the preparation literally he kept the body of Christ at a standstill is it true that everything he shared you have never had it will you be honest to say you have never had it is it true that what he taught you has never been heard he has repeated it in many churches he has taught series on it so why seek him why crowd yourself outside in overflows why sit down and stream why cancel your programs you didn't bring a man you brought a grace you brought an anointing you brought a priceless ability that can turn the lives of people around now foolish people say what is there about them no no when you honor a man you don't honor a body you honor sacrifice you honor a depth of sacrifice that has afforded god space to move through that vessel in a mighty way listen listen look up let me tell you something come david dam let's assume david dam has let's assume that he has um high blood pressure or hiv watch this don't you think god wants to heal him on wednesday don't you think god wants to heal him next year the desire of god to heal him is the day someone who has paid the price to give god space to release that dimension of his possibility when that vessel appears his healing has come why do people sit on a wheelchair till an anointed man comes is it that that's the day god wanted to heal them that's the day the anointing that could solve that problem stepped in there are men that step into places and they just shift atmospheres just like that but they never started that way i shared a verse of scripture that i would want to share with us the lord thank you david the lord gave me an instruction to repeat a few portions of what i shared in the meeting today with us and it will bless you luke 180 please luke chapter 1 verse 80 luke chapter 1 verse 80 this was our first prayer point yesterday at the conference and i want to establish it again and then we will pray luke chapter 1 media please help us i want us to pray tonight luke chapter 1 verse Are you there? The first four words, please, if you are a Christian. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. Put your name where there is child. There, yeah, ready? One, two, go. So men can grow. So men can grow. The problem is not where I am. I know I may not be so anointed now. I know I am barren of understanding but the Bible reveals to us that there is a possibility in the spirit where men can lead their current spiritual level to a pedestal that is higher and the child John the Baptist grew he was ordained a prophet from prophecy but he was born a child and the child grew when I found this scripture I jumped I said so men can grow once upon a time i was not here i grew meaning there are levels i should get to that i'm not yet there i can grow growth is a secret growth is a provision in the body that translates men into limitless possibilities i can grow and the child john grew to become a prophet 
and the child naive barren of any sensory perception into the realm of the spirit no prophetic acumen and the child grew men can grow i'm not hearing god now you can grow i'm not anointed now i can grow my company is nothing to write home about it can grow my marriage is nothing to write home about it can grow my home is full of children who are disturbing they will grow growth is a mystery that when you understand you know there is hope and the child grew and e and i that little ministry that was meeting on the floor grew to what it is now and koinonia is growing 10 years from now when we stand before the nations and we look at the photos of today as excited as we are about today we will nod and say that's david dam and they say who that guy shaking the nations and david dam grew ah look at mama look at femi promise these guys are just shaking nations in different territories and you will watch the pictures and see them sitting down and they and they will see some of you who are seated now as if you don't know anything about the anointing when they hear and say my god that is the woman of god whose crusades are packed full everywhere she's the one can you see her face in that picture and the woman grew. men can grow into the anointing men can grow into limitless possibilities in the spirit the challenge is not where you are the challenge is do you want there was a day this guy when he joined the worship team he could not play keyboard like this he challenged himself his music director and his leaders challenged him and he decided to grow now when i learned how to play keyboard i don't think this guy had laid his hand on a keyboard i began to play keyboard 1994 94 95 but i refused to grow so although it's that long where i stopped in the growth is still where i am today you can be born again for donkey years but the peg you gave god is still where he will faithfully stand and wait for you you can be ministry and the highest miracle you will ever see is headache because that's where you stopped the moment you got to that level of your anointing you graduated yourself awarded yourself and held a convocation for yourself but there are those who even at phd they say we are still undergraduates lord we are staying with you when i hear men like benny Hinn saying i still want more of his anointing i say my god more of what after shaking nations yet some of us are already here bragging in our arrogance oh i prophesied to sister so 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 it came to pass you think that's what you are going to use to shift nations you are joking and the child i want to show you that men don't just happen and work strong in spirit but the system is this he was in the desert he was in the place of training for david it was the cave of adulam listen please hear me i thought in the conference where we went to on the coming revival and i mean i think some of you need to get our external administration sometimes i wish that i carry all of you along and uh, because those meetings are usually very glorious meetings very epochal teachings and i taught yesterday on what we call the travail the mystery of seasons the mystery of the dealing of god in a man's life that brings the anointing the anointing does not come just because you want it the anointing is like a certificate that is given to you at the end of a season of being dealt with god and i want to share just a few parts of it and then we'll pray i want us to pray i'll just spend a few minutes and then we'll pray tonight fill me up till i overflow i want to run over I want to run over Fill me up Till I overflow I want to Fill me up Fill me up Till I overflow
Hallelujah. Please sit down. When a believer, listen to me, let me teach you. Let me show you how people grow and become matured in the spirit. Men do not become matured in the spirit just by going to church. There is a step there. But there is a system. Listen to me, please. God's system of working with men. There are seasons of your life. Watch this. When you will pass through what we call the travail. Jesus said something very interesting. John chapter 16, please give it to us quickly, media. John chapter 16, verse 21. Jesus was teaching on the ministry of the Holy Spirit and he said something that is very interesting. If you're a Christian and it's projected and you can see it, please, I want you to read it. One, two, read. Why? stop this is strange i said it yesterday and i want to repeat it here some travails are because your time has come it's not because you are out of alignment with god's system jesus is teaching a woman comes to a point in her life where she's in travail the travail is not because she hated god the travail is because her time has come many immature believers will say ah the travel is a sign that she's missing out on god somewhere the bible says because her hour is come do you know there are things that happen to people's lives simply because seasons have come not because you are out of sync with god seasons have come follow me but as soon as she's delivered of the child the reason for her travel not a child the child the very object for which the sorrow came the bible says she remembered no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world but until then there is a contention please listen to me many pastors have tried to preach what i'm telling you away to tell believers nothing like that happens i i I love the body of Christ but brothers and sisters I tell you this by the authority of the grace of Christ given to me I know how men become anointed don't sit down and allow people just fool you into thinking one day an extreme dimension of the anointing will come you are really joking there is a system and the caption of that system is called the travail I will tell you why these seasons come they must come you never pray them away you only pray for grace to pass through them the praying and saying they should not come is saying i do not want to enter that realm i don't care who you are i don't care how you love god jesus went through a season where he said father if it be thy will if it's possible let's renegotiate how this thing will happen but he quickly remembered and said nevertheless not my will but your will be done Abraham waited 25 solid years embarrassingly painful his servants had children and he did not have any do you know what it means to respect a man who does not have results while you the subordinate has it that's what Abraham went through he didn't just go through barrenness he went through the shame and the pain yet he waited is in the system of god and is how he builds men and brings them into authentic power the generals of faith worked that way our generation is running away from it and we keep bragging and prophesying in arrogance we are going to do more than smith wiggles what you go and read their history and you will see a track record there is not one of them i know that escaped this not one not one of them there is a season of travail because your hour how many people want to start ministry without going through this and they crash land and make a fool out of themselves there is what qualifies you to host God there is what qualifies you to be a dispenser of the possibilities of God to nations one of it is this the mystery of the travail of 
seasons that stretch your spiritual life from border to border seasons that stretch every part of your conviction mm. someone is getting blessed fill me up till I overflow I wanna run I wanna run one more time fill me up fill me up let me tell you the benefit of the dealings of God the first advantage of the dealings of God is that the dealings of God with a man produces alignment it produces yieldedness and it produces a track record in the spirit never forget this the dealings of god the spirit of man cannot align to god by default that destiny must come under a system that will compel alignment a system in ancient times they had a way they made the anointing oil right the olive oil they would take the olive plants and put them on something that looks like a threshing floor and put a heavy object upon it and someone will hold it and begin to turn it clockwise and the pressure mounted on that olive begins to squeeze out the oil the oil will drip out together with particles impurities but the man for the joy of the oil will not even mind the cry let me tell you God loves you too much to let your tears deceive him don't think he plans to end that season you must drink that cup in full I know what I'm saying does not look pleasant I show you the path to glory there is a relationship between death and glory there is a relationship between death and glory you will never be able to access glory without death verily verily I say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides and No, you don't just speak to nations and doors open. I'm in Christ. You are joking. You are really joking. That ignorance is a sign that there's something you have not even seen. Because scripture is prophetic. You need the Holy Ghost. Holy men were moved by the Spirit. So only the Holy Spirit can interpret what he wrote. There are three reasons why we go through seasons of travail. Let me give it to us quickly. Number one. Sabra kata kata. Ah. The seasons of travail in a man's life. Listen. They, they, are, they create experiences that give you a personal revelation of who God is. The first advantage of seasons of travail is a personal revelation of who God is personal revelation there's too much theoretical knowledge about God in the body of Christ so many people they know the God that this person said people come to sing special numbers are you clapping for my Jesus is that what you give my God a foreign and a strange incense rising you must go through seasons the first advantage of the seasons of travail is they break out every sense of falsehood and theory and help you know who God is for yourself no longer the God of Joshua Selman you encounter him every name that God was named was an experience a season introduced that dimension of him what is the name you have given God based on your experience if you were asked to never call God by any name in the Bible has your experience given him a name that you can relate with you call him the name of another man's experience show me a name like a Jimmy can have a secret name for hope hope can have a secret name for a Jimmy Aaron can have a secret name for his wife I want you to show me a name that your experience with God has brought that only you can call someone else does not understand but two of you know 
I'll show you why many people do not have convictions in the body of Christ. They know the God of another person. They do not know him for themselves. God's ultimate desire is not only that men will introduce him to you, but that they serve as ushers. A time must come, you must have a track record and say, I know him. I know whom I have believed. I know. Hmm. Job 42 from verse 5 to 8. Job was rich. He talked about God. He was a God-fearing man. He gave sacrifices. But a time came in the life of Job. He could not explain the predicaments in his life. Everything went haywire. His entire life crashed. And in the end, this is what Job said. Read it please. One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now, my eyes have seen you. I heard Joshua Selman when he was talking about you. I heard him say you can heal the sick. I said amen. But now that they told me I am SS, I need to know the healer now. Now that they told me that I, I am barren, I tried everything. I went to every man of God. They did their best. Lord, I locked the door. Me and you show me something about your glory. Church history is full of men who had encounters when they closed the door at everything and say, Lord, show me something. I'm tired of hearing the God of someone else and an explanation I cannot relate with. Show me the song that has come out of your experience with God. Worshippers, you have been singing Kotka's song. You've been singing Thai Tribet song. Show me a song that came out of your tears. You thought you will not make the next day. And he gave you a song. Every time you are in a challenge, that song comes. It may not minister to others, but it's your song. It's not a song for congregation. It's a song for your secret place. A song that reminds you of who God is. Let me tell you. You know why people, certain people in the body of Christ become unshakable and immovable? It's not because they are blind. It's not because they are not human. They have an experience with God that is higher than every other thing. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now I have had an encounter with you. Job summoned God in chapter 38 and said, God, you need to come and reveal yourself to me. And when God showed up, God said, Job, I've been hearing you talk since chapter 1. I've just been keeping quiet. You've been making a lot of noise like you know me. Now let me talk to you. Where were you when I founded the earth? When I laid the foundations? When the morning star sang? And Job said, my God, I was never taught that there is such a thing. He said, declare if you have understanding. There are healing evangelists who stepped into the level of creative miracles when they sat down and prayed Kenneth E. Hagin he was the guinea pig to his healing ministry dying of a deformity and nobody could heal him I told you about my story I've had fungal infection that ate my head they said hair will not grow on my head again I know what oppression looks like when I'm laying hands on people that memory sponsors the release of the anointing there is something that sponsors compassion. It's not just because I'm kind-hearted. No. no. When you stand and you see someone's legs eaten by worms and is smelling, you are attempting to go, but you remember an experience. Ha! Fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to go. I want to run Fill me up Let me relate it to students Have you seen Have you seen a final year student Advising a new student Who is just entering he will tell you sorry sir they gave me a course i'm trying to do change of department and the boy cannot sleep 
and the final year student is laughing because to that guy is a mount, he, he's having a mountain. Can they change my course? Uh, can they do this? Sorry, sir. How do they do it in ABU? And you laugh and say, My brother, there's more to cover. You better relax. You have not seen the guy in the department you are going to. And then she enters the office of the man, and for the first time in her life, a man would blast and insult her. He said, You are stupid if you think you're a prostitute. I'm not for you. Go out. <sighs> And she leaves. Never had she been insulted like that. Then you find out others who live in that realm. Every day they insulted them till they submitted their project. It's called growth. And the child grew. No matter how you sympathize with that boy, leave him. Sometimes don't pity people too much to cover seasons that will afford them opportunity to grow. There, there is sometimes you can go through so much pain, you want to over pamper people, and in doing it, you don't give them the opportunity to know God. Leave them alone. Every day you are giving him two, two hundred naira. One day tell him, Look, I've done my best for you. Go and find out. And he would think he would call him later. He say, Abba, I know Sam. Sam will call me. He can't allow me to die like this. I saw him cooking yam. And then you, the Holy Spirit will tell you, don't call him. By nine o'clock, he will start browsing the secret of prosperity. Enter. Now, something is happening to him. Don't stop it. Pressure leads people to the anointing. When a man starts a ministry, he will criticize every man of God. What is there with crowd? Wait and see. It's just because we need a venue. When he has a venue and for two years, he will first deny. Then later he will look at it and say, well, there may be something. After three years, he will be the first to sit down in the pastor's conference. When they say, I prophesy open door, he will be on his knees before the prophecy comes. Pressure brought him to an encounter. There are people who are too stubborn. Pharaoh was like that. Pharaoh did not have an experience with God. He only knew the God of the Hebrews. One day God said, I will reveal to you who I am. Moses, let me use you as a tool. Go and show this man. And he said, is he just parting the Red Sea? They left him face to face. When he killed his child, he said, I did it. Me, God, let your witches bring him back to life. And all the gods of Egypt could not do it. And he said, the God of Moses, he is Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You need an experience with God that will give you the audacity to move through life. We chicken out too much and we look at life strange as if it's because you have not gone through. I want you, wherever you thrill your experiences, go and gather them this night. Create a basket in the spirit. Call it my testimony and call it my ladder to the place of the anointing store it back i know a and b happened to you that was not favorable but the bible says for we know those who have not gone through it do not know but us we know that all things all things all things all things there are things i've gone through in my life that make me look at mountains like mold hills i tell you I don't even pray about them. What for? It's a waste of time. I already have walked with God enough to know that there is a way out. I don't have to disturb him. Some prayers are a symbol of faith and faithlessness and ignorance. It's because you do not understand the systems of God. A track record. That track record produces strength and stamina. Proverbs 24 verse 10. If you fall in the day of battle, it says your strength is small. I see a lot of believers who do not have stamina. You, you see how malleable they are. Everything bends them. Under pressure to explain everything to everybody. No, it's not like that. It's not like I'm a bad person. Who cares? There is a system you go with God. That you are governed by posterity, conscience and the fear of God. Any other person can go places. I look at the body of Christ and there's too much pressure to defend our ego. Let, let them not say it's me that carried this, you know. See, everybody watch. Uh -uh. Let them think what they want to think. You have gone through a lot with God to know that honor is a mantle. It's not just what you fight for. If it's not on your life, no matter how innocent you are, you will not be honorable. 
do you have that track record please i'm telling you this so that when you go back home you will kneel down and thank god for what made you cry yesterday something that brought tears out of your eyes has now opened you up to enough room to know god listen listen i wish what i were saying were a lie i would have just told you sorry but what i'm saying is so true is the foundation for authentic power are we together every time they talk of blessing you you think of your uncle you think you have faith you really don't have faith then one day your uncle leaves you and says from today uh, you are a man how old did you say you are you say yes, I'm 23 I'm, I'm still a child he says no you are a man from today you fend for yourself for one month you will see that there's no result meaning somebody's result was covering you corporate success can be dangerous because you can hide under it thinking you are making it worship team is doing well are you doing well you many people hide under corporate success we are anointed i know we are men of god i know life will separate you and demand from you you have to prove that you are intrinsically valuable and the key is to pass through these seasons before i continue i want you to pray one minute from your heart and say lord the let the seasons come i only ask for grace i'm no longer afraid i've been running away from it and fast forwarding my breakthrough but lord i summon courage uh -uh. if it is hunger let me go through it till i catch the key for wealth i'm tired of begging up and down lord let these seasons bring me to the anointing i know i know oh the bible says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up are you praying koinonia lord let them come they may be painful but i open up my spirit and i receive the voice of god through those experiences they may be embarrassing but lord i need an encounter i need to know you for myself Are you praying? I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now I know that challenges do not kill. I had men say it, but I know now. Hallelujah. Listen. This is what makes your sermons powerful because you are speaking from a depth of conviction when you preach from pain you don't preach and you are looking whether you are right or wrong ah i hope this thing i'm saying that's theory you went to do browsing copy and paste but when you are preaching your life and your pain blood is dripping from your life that testifies that you know what you are saying you are not advising people you are telling them the way out whether they believe or not is their cup of tea men of conviction are men who have pain they have scars that are, let me tell you a scarless man is an anoint is, is, is a man who is barren of the anointing your scar is where the anointing is rubbed on it's not rubbed where there is no scar the place of scar is the point of application the balm in Gilead is not applied to a place where there is no wound that anointing when Ambrobas hit someone and the Samaritan man came he rubbed oil on the places of the wounds everywhere that he did not have wound there was no need for anointing don't rub your pain there is glory coming out there don't rub your financial struggles there is an unction coming up there don't rob your barrenness let me tell you let all the naysayers preach you will find them after koinonia they will still tell you i'm talking nonsense to you you will still hear them but you continue you are going through it for them the day they will need your miracle by then you will be anointed enough to help them listen 
there were people who said things about me many years they never saw my face they do not even know me many years later they would come to meet me hearing about joshua selman they never knew never knew and now they saw me and compassionately like joseph ministering to his brother i would minister to them while i was going through what would give me the anointing to help them the devil was using them to criticize and talk but god said keep moving just set your face like a flint sometimes silence is the way to speak silence is the only way to speak in certain seasons i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart tonight you catch the key i'm sharing with you you catch an unction that will change your life you are two people conscious it has stopped you from entering your what will they say there is a way you go through something i say let them say the trouser is torn no problem you, you have gone this this trying to live your life for people you just tell yourself it's over i'm done with it i i i know my redeemer lives if it does not bless me let me die but doing it just for my reputation is over i'm tired of trying to just be nice for people and experience so you want to worship god and you're watching that guy i like is looking at me maybe my clothes will roll maybe they will see my inner wears there is a way you go through fire and not believe you will come out before they raise the song you will lie down as if you are sleeping and start rolling on the ground roll like a mad person and people will say ah, ah david why are you rolling this way and he said i'm rolling to the god i'm dancing to the god who took the kingdom i never knew i would be a king god took me now you just inherited joy i be your soul's daughter you don't know what happened between me and your father god took an anointing from your father and brought it to me fill me up till i overflow i wanna run i wanna run fill me up everyone here you need a personal experience with God listen I speak especially for the men you cannot live a lifetime of conviction without encounters you will bend to your convictions left right and center because the devil will throw everything at you you must have a story in your life that you can tell your children and say in 1971 I thought I would be eaten by this disease but I'm standing strong Satan where were you in 1971 if I didn't die then I would not die now we have boastful confessions in the body of Christ without an experience that sponsors our conviction oh if my ministry does not grow in one year let it be that i'm not called of god and you are there ranting and speaking nonsense the key is not english the key is not rema the key is a track record when blood drips from you then the oil comes through it the anointing is for the place of pain i'm speaking to someone here is for the place of pain no scars no anointing no scars no grace no scars no testimony no scars no unction that's how it works you can preach another message to yourself but I tell you if it is power you look for I show you the way it comes a track record the cave of Adulam seasons of pain seasons of travail as soon as Zion travails as soon as she begins the contractions that comes to a woman is not a sign that she's a stupid woman it will make her uncomfortable she will get up and be walking around when she goes to the hospital they will make her do exercise she will do stupid things 
her husband will be there she will act as if she's out of her sense a baby is coming when that baby comes so come visitors everywhere for the sake of the baby you are gathered here today because somebody did not allow this training to pass you are gathered here today because there is blood dripping from someone's altar we who will gather in your own meeting because of the price you are paying you think it will happen something for nothing is witchcraft you are joking there is a track record with all the greed in you with all the pride and the self-centeredness you want the anointing no sir you will pass through that furnace i guarantee you i guarantee you while you are crying god will only supply grace he will not take you out but if you can walk and finally step out at the other end you will be a vessel unto honor it is at that point you will think a thing and god will do it you have not prayed you are thinking god i think i need i need fifty thousand someone says god said i should give you it's a realm you don't claim it you qualify for it there are things I've, i'm seeing in my life now i wanted them many years but i did not know that the track record had not created room for them God kept telling me forget about these things just keep walking with me today I wonder I didn't even know when they came the track record. oh Lord make me a kingdom financier and then God tells you to sew all your clothes and everything and then people pity you you feel like an idiot you work so hard and God tells you to give it away and God said, you say, but God, why are you not doing it for someone else? I thought you said you wanted the wealth mantle. You think it's just about wearing designers? You are joking. There is a fullness of affliction. You make others rich and remain poor. A season comes, God will say, the season is full. Your cup is full and your heavens are open. And men say, where is this coming from? It's a mystery. See, these are the men you talk about them you bring curses on yourself believe me when i tell you this thing there are men you speak about them literally god will, they don't curse you they are covenant the blood that has come out from their life is still on an altar it, it has a throne in heaven this is what produces miracles these things you are seeing this is not by faith it's a covenant god vows to back you as far as this is concerned so you can go to the nations you don't need to ask them whether they believe god in the church you just need to go you carry your altar you carry your covenant and then you bless the world do you have an encounter with god do you know him not jesus of nazareth do you know him do you know him I cried for a revelation of him not just a vision of Jesus an experience so when I say God is a good God something in me should be able to explain it when I say God is a deliverer I should be able to say how many are they that rise up against me many are they which say where is his help I should be able to say but thou O Lord art a shield for me you're my glory my glory not just koinonia's glory my glory i know you can lift my head i went through hell men said bury him but you brought me out that was david for you david was a man who knew god you see why he knew god he went through more pains than any king he went through more disappointment to an extent that god said you will not build me a temple he would have been offended he said god i know you too much I know you too much to complain i will gather the money for my son speaking to you too many believers who don't know god we brag around thinking because we have little anointings here and there brother you need a track record that blood you are running away from must come out no it must come out if it came out of the son of god it must come out of his body the sufferings of christ and the glory that 
I show you a virgin path that many people may never follow they don't like it they like the anointing they like the charismatism they like the influence but they do not like the track record a man can get to a level where if he prophesies to you and it's a mistake God will make that mistake come to pass because there is a covenant he has tied his integrity to so they can just look at you and say be blessed you have entered the creative dimension of your work with God where you don't just reveal things you create them it's a realm it's a realm I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart not many men of God will teach you this thing I'm telling you because many people consider it to be the hallmark of their ministry it's like a man coming to tell you bedroom secrets between you and the wife no sensible married man will just carry anybody outside and come and tell you bedroom secrets what I'm telling you now is the mystery responsible for any great man most men of God I understand why they create a system and never share it I don't think it's pride they value the blood that drips from them it takes love for you to hear what I'm teaching you and you must love God to appreciate it just like there are some of you looking and say wow this is very interesting look if I were you I would stop rushing my life I really will stay with God see if you seek him you will find him we are not seeking him we are seeking things around him when fasting is still a problem you are seeking him you are joking God will say separate yourself two days I want to talk with you ah oh God I beg please you are there I bind that spirit and I'm not talking of some hilarious things after tonight's meeting say I'm going 60 days all that is religion because it's not directed you will only starve yourself for nothing listen now number two this will be probably one of the greatest messages you would have heard in this 2016 if you work with what I'm teaching you you will command results in a way that will scare you believe me remember I gave us a scripture that is a verse of comfort and the child grieved so you don't have to sit down and think some people were born like that nobody was born like that and Jesus grew John grew so you can grow Benny Hinn grew Kenneth Copeland grew you must grow you will not just become you will grow number two the second advantage of seasons of travail in our lives the second advantage is that it impacts upon your life understanding understanding a comprehension of the secrets of God listen there are secrets in God that only when you are the lowest point of your life you will see them there are things God has shared with me today I will know I, well let me not say no mortal man there is nobody that may ever get to hear it you will not even believe it there are secrets that until you get to a level with God if it does not show even you yourself will not believe it listen we take truths from faith to faith there are mysteries that surround this kingdom that control results and power when you are there with God it affords him the opportunity to show you certain deep things that when you were high there you would not have believed but now that you are there you will hear understanding the comprehension of the secrets of God the Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord right the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will reveal his covenant look at me <laughs> read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation 
I promise you, I promise you, there are things you will never see. Pain is a key in the spirit. There are doors that only pain can open. Believe me, brothers and sisters, believe me on this. There are times you go through seasons in your life. When you go through those seasons in your life, then certain scriptures open up. The Lord is my shield and my salvation. Who shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom? And it now makes sense. Ah, I now see. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. All of a sudden, it will be as if you have written books, but now you are seeing things. There are things I've seen this year that I literally had to stop and I started crying. I said, my God. There are things I said by the Spirit in Koinonia teachings that not even me had come into the fullness of the comprehension of it. I have looked at them. Psalm 54 verse 7 For he had delivered me out of all trouble and my eye had seen his desire on my enemies. Do you have an experience that can explain that? A thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. None shall harm you. Only will you stand and see. Have you seen that? That's why the name of Jesus doesn't make any, any impact for many people. We shout Jesus like a champ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. It's not in English. That name reacts to something. See, let me tell you. There are men that are deeply respected in the realm of the spirit. Satan knows what makes him respect men. It's not English. When you see a man walking in this realm of the spirit, full of scars, blood dripping down as a symbol of his sacrifice to communicate his desire to let the multifaceted dimensions of God be hosted in him. They are the kinds that he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. They are the kinds that are unkillable. They will match a charm and pass. Even the charm knows it will not work. It's not try. Maybe I, I'm, I'm trying to make the charm work. No, no. It's a realm. That is the realm where they can look and say, no sickness can touch me. You know, we mock ourselves in the body of Christ. Oh, I, I mean, I, I can't be sick. And we're just joking. Do you know at what level in the spirit that word becomes activated in your life? every prophecy have, has levels just like in our environment there, there are certain conditions for certain things to happen don't just speak because you saw it in the Bible are we together and so there are so many men of God today they carry their hands lay it on sick people and say I'm anointed and after five years they carry the diseases on the people not by airborne disease the mystery of transference because they do not know that you must truly sustain a higher potential. The Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest thou be a partaker. Just by laying hands, you can partake. Listen, in your walk with God, there are secrets God will show you they are not for public consumption they are not doctrines they are secrets he reveals to you to guide the delivery of the grace he has put upon you it will mislead people when these secrets become public not necessarily because they are demonic but it is a unique dealing of god to you william branham had a secret with god where his angel will appear when he saw that angel in a healing meeting it was a sign to him that the prophetic mantle was activated then he would begin to heal and prophesy 
now if you sit down and walk like that you will get into witchcraft something else will appear to you are we together now because that was a unique dealing a portion for Kenneth E. Hagin it is in the secret place as you walk with God you begin to learn certain anointings he will train you with certain sensations just for you to know what kind of anointing is in the building now you can't write a book on it you will bring people into error he will show you when the healing anointing is there he will use your body parts as keys to symbolize to you you will your your organs of interaction with the spirit will be heightened they have personalized dealings with the spirit so when you come for a meeting you stand near someone you can know that there is witchcraft at work not just because you saw a spirit a code was given to you in the secret place and God says whenever you have this sensation is the presence of a demon spirit for someone else that sensation can mean breakthrough is coming it's like jam questions you see how they mix them your question one is someone's question ten that's how it is in the spirit he may you may feel heat in your hand and say it's healing anointing no it is your secret place that gives you your own question paper and God tells you for you this experience means breakthrough is coming oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. I minister to people sometimes you see me laying hands on people and sometimes I can just stand there are there are things your body becomes a superconductor of his glory you can feel the impulses of God's desire he can move in any way he wants with you but we never remain in the secret place until we get that depth of understanding I don't just mean understanding of quoting scriptures the secret meaning to truths in scripture you can stay with God and the moment you see someone coming you know that this man will destroy me it's, you didn't have a vision there is a dealing with God there is an impulse you know that this car is going to have accident I will come out it's not just out of fear hi why have I been feeling like a cow no 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 no, no. I'm not talking about that I'm talking about a sensation you get up and you can know my elder sister is in trouble you were trained in the secret place i show you mysteries now, physically you just see men doing things but i wish your eyes would be open in the spirit they are like robots wires from eternity connected to different parts of them that communicate several impulses of the spirit that's how sometimes i can know the exact point where the holy ghost will touch someone I can stop my preaching and as I'm opening my mouth the anointing is touching the person it's a training it's not guessing you try doing it it's not guessing that level of precision comes in the secret when he visits you he tells you this is a key to this When you have the humility to acknowledge that you need help, you will get help from God. But if you allow yourself to dance in all this rubbish that people bring that makes themselves comfortable, I'm telling you this. Look, let me tell you. You see, when someone is talking to you, find out first whether there is a measure of the result the person is trying to propose to you. Are we together? There are people who know nothing about the anointing, yet they say so much, they make a lot of noise and, and, and they, they mock the body over the anointing. The anointing is a priceless commodity. A lifestyle of genuine holiness. Flee immorality, fornication, adultery if you are married, hallelujah the filthiness of the flesh 
you can't be smoking and prophesying something is wrong are we together now i'm not condemning you that's why we are here this is a family but but we must deal with it you can't swallow all kinds of things and codeine and all it's called the filthiness of the flesh if that price is too much for power then forget about it forget about genuine anointing i will it says i will return to my place till they acknowledge two scriptures and then we'll move to the next session galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 is god speaking to someone very quickly please media help us galatians 5 we have a lot to do tonight i want you to maximize this night and that's the first instruction from god to all of us i like us to read now please give us give us amplified media can we have amplified is it possible one to read now the doings practices of the flesh are clear obvious they are what what's number one in the list hold on i'm just i'm just trying to let me tell you something i wish i were not the person who was going to talk about this thing but you see immorality is not just an act immorality is a spirit it does something to your spirit man are we together and so when you find out that this is a challenge in your life assuming that it will be solved by itself is a dangerous thing you run to god are we together you run like the deer panting after the water brooks and he lists all of them first john 7 verse 9 the last scripture on that wise one to read everyone that we have seen and confess our sins his what hold on his when there is a condition there is a condition it says if we confess our sins um you can go back to amplify god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness in fact verse verse 8 when you read from verse 8 um can we just back up one verse it says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us then the next verse says but if we confess confess is not these religious things that people do around but let me tell you something there are times you need to stay with god that's why i encourage retreats write it if you are writing look if you are a christian i am personally convinced that any christian who does not have periodic seasons of retreat will never be able to last retreats are powerful times of self-examination and exposition it doesn't mean you have to do anything bad the light of his glory comes upon you and god steps the bar and blesses you and anoints you the issue of sin must be dealt with how do we solve the problem of sin number one you must be born again you must be born again there are many church goers there are heads of departments there are pastors there are so many people who have not given their lives to jesus christ please let me tell you something trying to receive something from a god you do not want to commit your life to is self-deceit are we together there are people here for instance who have come they may not be ready to accept the lordship of jesus but they want the healing that flows from him the ultimate solution to the sin problem is a genuine encounter with jesus christ are we together the bible says this is the testimony 
that God has given us eternal life, right? And it says this life is in his son. It says he who has the son. You cannot have life by ignoring the son. It is by embracing the son that you have eternal life. Say amen. You must be born again. The next key is in John 8 34. John 8 34. And in Romans 6 23. I just want to deal with this because it came very seriously upon my spirit and I believe it's a challenge for us. Now I want you to read it. John 8 34. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever commits sin is a woman. That means under the dominion. It didn't say whoever commits sin is a bad person. But that you have allowed the dominion of sin over your life. 6.23 of Romans. 6.23. Romans 6.23. One to read. Hold on. Change the word wages to salary. Are you ready? One, two, read. Again. If you work for me and I don't pay you, am I a good person? Are we together? If you work for me, what do you expect at the end of the month? Even if there is strike, you expect that there is a, a what? So the Bible says, whosoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Meaning sin is his master. And the Bible says, that man pays. What does he give? Death there does not just mean ceasing to live. Affliction. Are we together? Woes. Curses. All kinds of things that can come upon a man's life. And impede his progress. The salary of sin is death. But it says, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus our Lord. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, grace, grace, grace. If you are not praying this prayer, you are really arrogant. Pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Grace, oh God. Shabarakata bariata. The vicissitudes and the challenges. As a pastor, pray. As a married man, pray. Don't say I'm married. As a married woman, pray. There are spirits that hunt only married people. Grace. Kaba shabarata kata. Shekete lekete bakoroto subadabaladaba. I mortify my body by the grace of God as an instrument of righteousness. Pray. Don't let the devil condemn you. But please cry unto God. Say Lord I need your power genuinely in my life. I need your power. I need your glory genuinely in my life. Fresh unction. Hallelujah. And please hear me. In case you are here and there is any sickness, any disease that came as a result of sin, I have good news for you. Our God is still a merciful God. You hear what I'm saying? Our God is still a merciful God. Savior. He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Write this down. Practice periodic self-examination especially when you think everything is all right with you listen to a secret that i give you practice periodic i don't care who you are practice periodic self-examination self-examination number two 
Send out of your life unapologetically people whose atmospheres cause you to walk in sin. Roommates, you must not stay in their room. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm giving you a big secret. Send them away. I'm staying with my uncle. That's why. Stand up. Let me tell you, if you get out of that house trusting God, the God of your salvation will arise for you. Hallelujah. A guy who asks you out, sister, and says, while you are thinking about answering him, you should be sleeping with him first before you decide whether you go out with him or not. Don't insult him. Run away and cut the spirit. Koinonia is quiet tonight. You want power, you want miracles. God is not a herbalist. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's be sincere with ourselves. If you really want to see the outstretched arm of God, you have to cry and say, God, help me. And in case you are here arrogantly saying, I'm free, yet, yet, the Bible says, let him that thinks take heed. Immorality, smoking, drinking. It's sad that you have to say these things. But there are people, we have all kinds of explanations. The alcohol, the Bible said in the New Testament, the Greek word for wine is alcoholic. I don't care what justification you bring to be a drunkard. A drunkard is a period. The Bible says wine is a mocker. I take it once in a while. You will suffer once in a while. Because it's when your breakthrough is coming that the temptation for liquor will come. Are we together? How about pornography? How about masturbation? Oh, I don't sleep around. It's a spirit. Why am I saying these things? These are the things that authorize the power of darkness. Please, don't say, especially this masturbation thing and pornography. I'm not condemning you. But don't ever, if anybody has preached to you and has said it's alright, Joshua Selman is telling you it's a, it's, a, it's a cancer of the spirit. That's why you find out your prayer life dries. No matter what happens. But I'm still healing the sick. Continue. Are we together? I want and I'm trusting God that there will be maximum breakthrough. But we have to be serious. Mean business with God. Mean business with God. The allergy sends me money once in a while. Please delete his number tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The military officer, it's not every time. It's three times a year. Delete his number even before we start ministry. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standed sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. There is something that can make a man's prayer to not reach heaven. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart. So when we begin to pray tonight, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, in this miracle service, this addiction is over. I have to end it. Are we together? I burn all my MBs. I buy my phone and I spend all my MB watching nonsense. Naked photos, all kinds of things. No, it's a spirit. See, anything you cannot control is a spirit, including food. Don't think I'm just talking. I'm, I'm going to come. Everybody has a slice in this pie. There must be something that relates to you. I don't have a problem with women. Food. You can't fast. Because of food, many of us would rather remain in the same spiritual level forever. Let me tell you, gluttony is as bad as fornication. 
I hear what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. You can talk about true power that puts situations and circumstances in command. And your entire life, do you know there are people that eat whether or not they are hungry? Once they see it, the same way a man sees a woman and cannot resist her. You see food and you look, ah, whose own is this? You put one bones, you add another one, you are eating beef until it finishes. There's no rest. It's an urge. You need help. You need help. Are we together? And all kinds of variations of addictions. Those who sleep with little children alone, put a naked adult woman, they will pass as if they didn't see her. Children. Men and men. Women and women. My name is Joshua Selman. Let me tell you, if you don't deal with these things, you will never go far. You will rise up as usual. But ask Samson. I will arise as before. And all of a sudden his glory. God. Am I condemning you? No. Will I be quiet about it? No. Because you must receive something tonight. So that you will not be healed and delivered. And the demons even mock you. Before prayer they just jump out and wait for you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Is it not in your Bible? I'm going to share with you on that. When a spirit leaves a man, what does it do? It leaves him forever. The Bible says Satan departed from Jesus for a season. Came back again when there was another pressure and Jesus started negotiating. Mercy, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup. Can we negotiate another way? But he overcame. He said, nevertheless, not my will. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to be sincere with ourselves tonight as we cry before God. I know what I've said is very uncomfortable to many of us, but this is the key. When you pray, you clear out that way. Satan does not like what I'm preaching. It takes a lot of courage to preach what I'm telling you. But that's the key. Are we together? But I think I'm okay. No, opportunity has not yet been created. So instead of sitting down to say, I hope my roommate is hearing. Uh -uh. There's no roommate. There's no, I hope my husband is hearing. God, I, God, apostle, God bless you. This stupid man, thank God he came for koinonia. I'm talking to you. There is no pointing fingers. You see, that spirit that exempts you from the word of God. Uh, that sense of self-righteousness that makes you feel, I am okay. Talk to a Jimmy or talk to Kenny or promise. Is the same spirit that destroys people. I'd like you to lift up your voice in one minute. Koinonia, cry before the God of heaven and say, Lord, it must be broken. Addictions must be broken. I don't care what you read in the internet about them. That alcoholism must be broken. I can't keep destroying my body. Pornography. Masturbation. I need you. I need you. Every hour. I need you. Come bless me now my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and righteousness pray shake it take a lava baba i've come to call that spirit a liar on christ the solid rock i stand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand
Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Some of you can do anything for money. If you must sleep with an animal for money, you will do it. For as long as there is money tied to it, you throw away your Christianity. If it's money, no problem. As long as you will give me money. Someone sent me a text. Uh, was it yesterday or day before yesterday? I was in the middle of a very serious, intense prayer time. And then his text came. And he said they wanted to give him a job. But they said he should give like advance. Like pay some money. So that they can process it. And I told him, I said, don't you do that. You cannot mix. You can't. If you are paid for it. Where then is the place of God? Please don't say I'm not a Nigerian. I'm not a stupid person. I know what I'm saying. Whatever God cannot do in my life. Oh, let no more do it. He said, lest you will say I made Abraham rich. Who told you God is not able? You see, all these carnal things we keep doing. We edge God out. When it comes to real issues, we act as if God is not alive. Oh, if God cannot do it, let it not be done. No. I want you to pray. And say, Lord, whatever I do not have discipline for, break it out of my life. Pray. Pray. Shabakataya. The secret for fire in a ministry. The secret for fire in a family. Is the secret for fire in a life. It's a painful reality. But it's a key that will take you high. Kapadakataya. Grace. Grace. I break every habit. Pray. I break any challenge. I call you by your name. Pray. Masturbation, you are a spirit. Pornography, you are a spirit. Gluttony, you are a spirit. Smoking, drinking. Grace tonight. Grace from the throne. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point on that. Listen. For many people, I have found out that we are not interested in paying the price to create the atmosphere. Everybody say atmosphere. Are we together? You are a brother, anybody, any sister can hop into your house any day, any time, anyhow. Are we together? Lie down on your bed loosely and carelessly. You don't care. 2 a.m. in the night, still in your house. What are you doing? We're in a relationship. Nonsense. You are not the first to get married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You must create discipline. If you are friends with a roommate and the roommate is bringing boys all the time to your room, negotiate. And brother can say, if that agreement, if you cannot reach a consensus like that, find a way of getting out of that place. Someone cannot be sleeping with a lady you are there watching. You will only watch for one month. I assure you. Atmospheres. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are things that can be discussed on phone. Discuss it on phone. When we were staying together, as Jimmy will tell you, when we were staying together, as years ago, there was an unwritten rule. Let me tell you, these are some of the rules that helped us. God is my witness. My younger sister is here. 
my younger sister has never slept in my house till today. My blood younger sister. Only two people have stayed in my house. One a Jimmy and one my younger brother the, the day he came. Am I stupid? No. Am I a fool? No. It's called atmosphere. It's the price for atmosphere. Someone comes to your room with visitors and says, please, there's a little birthday party. It looks like you are busy today. Can you give us the room? You thought they just celebrated birthday and drank beer and smoked and left. They left spirits. They left influences. Yes, I know what I'm saying. You get into that room, I assure you, it will take the grace of God for you to connect again. How about all kinds of petty movies? A lot of us believers have all kinds of compartments on our phone. There is compartment A, gospel. Gospel means anything that reminds you of heaven. And then there is the B part. When you want to socialize. Look, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Choose ye when? Otherwise, I don't care whether they dip you in one gallon of oil. I assure you, you will fall down, you will stand up. Satan will be waiting for you there. You will have dreams that will press nonsense out of you. Shout Jesus, shout Abraham, shout any name you know. Nothing will happen. That's what makes us powerless. He told Gideon, said, why have we not seen the miracles of our fathers? He said, take away the idols. My room cannot be a place for somebody to keep beer. Don't take it, but let me use your fridge to make it cold. What are you doing? It's exactly the same thing. Please pray in one minute and say, Lord, the price and the unashamedness to create an atmosphere. An atmosphere. Lift your voice. Pray. The price. My, my room, my house, my office cannot be a place for rubbish. When they want to bribe, it's not in my office. The meeting will not be held in my office. When they want to fake a miracle, it will not be on my pulpit. Pray, pastors. Don't let any Tom, Dick and Harry just arise and hold the mic on your pulpit and do all kinds of jamborees. I paid the price to create the atmosphere to host the presence of God. Pray, Koinonia. It's part of the meeting. This is already someone's deliverance. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, only, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, 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 faithful. Faithful, faithful, Do this and you will see the power of God in your life in a way that you'll be surprised. Imagine that you are sleeping and all that is playing is a powerful prophecy. Let me tell you what will happen. You will continue listening to it in your dreams. I guarantee you. And that one is powerful because your body that limits the spirit is sleeping. Ah, you will access anointings. You will wake up under a strong presence. I know what I'm saying. Number two, let's hurry up. The second challenge or the second key 
I think the rain is settled, so as many, if it's not an interruption, please um, arrange them outside. If they can still squeeze in, that's all right. Number two, let's hurry up, please. The reality of demon spirits and the character of their operation, write it down, is something you cannot ignore and prevail in this life. The reality, demon spirits, alongside the character of their operation, the Bible again and again cautions us and says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Satan has a way he operates. There is a way, there is a system that Satan operates. Anybody who ignores the reality of demon spirits alongside an, an insight into the character of their operations will pay the price severely. Let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 4, please, verse 14 and 18. Media help us. Luke 4, 14 and 18. The Bible says Jesus took the scroll, right? He, the messianic prophecy. And um, go to verse 15, please. Next verse. 15. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all 16. You are reading down to 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Right? What did he read? Then it was given to him. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The Messianic prophecy. 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the broken hearted, to preach what? Deliverance to the captives. There are people under captivity. The reality of demon spirits in our world and the fact that they influence people, Christians and unbelievers alike should not be ignored. Are demons real? The Bible says so. Is Satan real? The Bible says so. Do they oppress people? Yes. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power, authority. The word there is exousia. Behold, I give you power. Luke 10 19. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. So there is the enemy and the enemy has a measure of power. Are we together? And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at me, please. Look at me. Koinonia, look at me. Every time Jesus commissioned people, the first thing he told them to do was to cast out demons. Not heal the sick. Cast out demons. Right? When you read... Um, Let's look at a scripture, Mark, Mark 6, we'll read verse 7, then we'll run to 13 quickly. Mark 6, 7, 13. And he called unto him the 12, read on please, it's projected, and did what? And began to send them forth two by two. He gave them power to do what? On clean spirits, on holy spirits. Spirits that are out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are called unclean spirits. They are everywhere like the air we breathe. They are responsible for the anger problem in people. Are we together? They are responsible for the barrenness in people. They are responsible for delay and retrogression. They are the ones who appear to you in dreams and sleep with you. They are the ones who appear and cause miscarriages. They are called unclean spirits. Now, regardless of the theological stratification, they are still spirits. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? Principalities. Uh -huh. Powers. Rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They are all called unclean spirits. And there are three ways that their, their ministry or their life found expression in the earth. Number one is covenants. 
is the most powerful way demon spirit advance their cause. Covenants. Number two is ignorance. Ignorance of the precepts and the principles of God. The light shines in darkness. So when there is no light, darkness remains. Are we together? And then number three, disobedience. 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 Demon spirits are real. A Christian cannot be possessed, but he sure can be influenced. Absolutely. Galatians 5, when you read from verse 16, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit and the Bible. He was talking to the Galatian church, people who had already encountered Christ. Are we together? But this is what he says. This I say then that you walk in the spirit so that you will not gratify what? The desires of the flesh. Then he says the flesh lusted after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh. Two of them are consistently contending. What does that tell you? That you're a Christian does not mean that these demon spirits will not attempt to influence, manipulate or wage control over your life. There's nothing embarrassing when a Christian is delivered. The operation looks like possession, but it's not possession. And now this is the balance. I'm going to create a balance. Because there are all kinds of prophetic ministries. Because they do not have a sound word base. Right? And let me tell you something. Even the prophetic and the supernatural is limited by the recipient's understanding of the operation of the word. Are we together? I can be a genuine prophet of God, but because I do not have a sound understanding of scripture, I can look at this beautiful lady looking at me and see a spirit behind her. And based on my interpretation of that vision, I call her a witch. Are we together? And then I fabricate a strategy. And I say, Oga, oh the solution to dealing with this, your wife, seeing that she's a witch, is to leave her. So that is my... That is my advice based on my limitation. It may not be that I saw a wrong vision. But because my vision was not dealt with on the strength of the word of God. For correct interpretation. It's not enough to see. Understandest what thou readest. He was looking. He was not understanding. Demons are real. They are here in this place tonight. Are we together? They came with many people. They came with many families. Many well-meaning people carried them. Our job is to separate you from them. That's what deliverance is. It's a separation. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. It's a complete translation. So every other thing you do, is in support of that understanding. Demons are real. Let me tell you. You will be surprised to find out. How many things have not been working in your life. And can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives. There were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time. I tried. I did all I knew to do. But when I realized that. You see let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage. Hear me. Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. Someone promises to help you. You go to bed, a stranger appears again. The person gets up in the morning and tells you, I can't remember telling you what I said. Please get out of my office. Something made them do so. The same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life. And you say, sorry, I don't need any help again. You say, God told me to do it. I don't like you, but I have to do it. Because something, may that thing, whatever thing it is, it must come upon you today. Yeah. Where men arise to make your life easy. Hallelujah. Demon spirits are real. Don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you. Rejoice. And listen, please, don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back. No. And by the way, it has nothing, deliverance has nothing to do with falling down 
and manifesting. It has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life. So you may be standing quietly and they are flying out of you, flying out of your destiny. The, when that, I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it. So that when you leave this place, you now expect that that door that refused to open. Now that you know a spirit caused it, you expect it to open. So you start saying in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. I expect favor. A woman who has not been able to give birth has not been able to take in. Husband is well. Wife is well. Both of you go to the hospital. They say there's nothing wrong as far as they know. Alright, take in madam. She cannot take in. Plants don't need consultation to take in. Animals don't need consultation. As haphazard as they are, the law still works. Because demons are not interested in the animals. They are interested in human beings. They are interested in your destiny. That's why they will refuse that you will not get that child. But the devil is a liar tonight. Yeah. What of all those, all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body? Lumps in your breast, lump in your stomach, lump every part. Movements around your body. What do you think is called? The Holy Spirit does not move in people in a foolish way. The Holy Spirit is, is, is he's an intelligent spirit. He does not oppress people. Do you know there are people here who cannot sleep? Young people, you, you, you watch them and they are still awake. Because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare. Demons are real. The last key, number three. That the Lord will have us tonight to know. All of us must possess this if we really need result. It's your faith. Hmm. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore holding forth the shield. Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And you say, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It says, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, quench, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen, faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion it's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around. I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen. It's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it, the elders obtain a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report you want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. 
I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight, God, through his spirit, will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in, there were people in Abuja, my Bible, uh, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests? All the way. Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. He said, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet, everyone. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me. I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. Every anointing that must land upon my life today, every grace, every spirit, every dimension, tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Koinonia, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are, at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are.
Shabarada balada 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 balada. Yes, oh God. I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say a war unto them who are at ease in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God, arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every strong all shall be broken. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me, I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your family. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories. That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen. 
the power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you, but your family. Are we together? And once that happens, know that the time has come. You pray it and declare that deliverance. Lift your hands. I want to pray now. Father, you brought us here to change lives, change testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. <sighs> Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God, I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the Spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means, there are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, shaka patakata, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now. Inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please let's save time. At the word of the Lord, I place the word of the Lord upon that situation of witchcraft inside outside is over is over is over is over i come with a word of prophecy i prophesy as i've been commanded miracles deliverances for families enough is enough oh god bring them there are so many people outside so many people outside all the overflows i see miracles it's like fire it's like fire hallelujah keep your hands down i'm seeing fire and it's going to come upon the heads of people and the lord is saying it is still the deliverance lord where are they where are they where are they right now all over the congregation i prophesy it like fire i see like an eruption a volcanic eruption coming on the heads of people the heads of people shake it where you are the fire will meet you there where you are where you are The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating up finances, eating up joy, eating up peace. Kapatatata, ekerato soto basiata.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars. And I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars, catch fire. Altars, catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now I pray, the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Failure, failure, failure. Causing failure in lives. Failure in destinies. Failure in ministries. Failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure. Fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains. And the Lord is saying, let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot? Inside and outside. At the count of three, I'd like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. Harato Soto Peketesh. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now, now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now, now, now. That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before and the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. 
please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord, I pray. My God. I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here. Any woman. Whose destiny has been exchanged. So that the life you are living is not your blueprint. Right now, let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now, right now, right now. Release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. Kapata shatatata. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft, every manipulation, I cause it now. I cause it now. I cause it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now in Jesus name, at the count of three, fire from the throne, fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sisters lift your hands. I want to pray. A very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer to get one woman to ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ay, ay, ay. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up in the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates. 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 Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Papataya. Gates be broken. Gates be broken. Gates be broken. I'm praying it again. Lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny.
to fail a programming to be barren who is this god that can look into time wherever they are at the count of three may the power of god fish them out one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire i open your destiny every lady every sister you are a gate you are a gate in the realm of the spirit mighty deliverance mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough is over is over is over by the power of the holy ghost over 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 Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. Is a, is, is a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys that have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers, lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, stopping his advancement at the count of three, some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. That fire. Help them, please. Help them. My goodness. Kaparata kata. Brothers are coming under this unction. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Help them. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Hallelujah. God does this all the time. And I don't know why God is doing this again. <laughs> ah. If he did it before, he can do it again. Say. Listen, I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easternans. Easternans, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east, get set. Be sensitive. Come on, you shouldn't be doing that. Shaparato kaparatia. Isanans. Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Spirit of God goes to the east. The Spirit of God goes to the east and is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Ibo people. Strange deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost is visiting your soil, visiting your foundation.
visiting your soil. If it did it before, it can do it again. Same God back then. Same God right now. If it did it before, Abia, 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 Abia said, Shaka Tabarata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you, Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil. Upon your soil, Southern Kaduna, Southern Kaduna, that's what I see. Southern Kaduna, connected to Southern Kaduna, there is a miracle happening. Altars in Southern Kaduna, I come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Leave God's people now. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this operation of the Spirit. I found it working in my life is powerful. God just calls a territory, and everyone is like a digital spiritual system, it's not something you just do by guesswork. It's the spirit of God. The spirit of God. The spirit of God. God is still touching Kaduna people. I'm still hearing it in my spirit. God is still touching Kaduna people. There's no escape. Any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state Hallelujah. Please lift your hands while still praying. I want to pray for students now. Something miraculous will happen here now. I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances. 
I'm going to pray. But there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon by the power of the Holy Ghost inside and outside. Results, results. Carry over us. Receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. CGPS. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally. By the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile. Hear me. That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. I bring it under fire. I bring it under fire. Shake a ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hand. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hands. Father, at least 17 people. Inside, outside, there are up to five people online. Supernatural jobs. May the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now. Right now, right now. Right now, receive it. Receive those letters in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. For you, for your loved ones. I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now. An anointing will come upon you. To signify what he's doing to them. Lord go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. The judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick. But um,
There are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now I know there are many people. Listen, there are two women particularly. One of them, the anointing of please, no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God. Please, the two women by themselves, I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. that devil. Let her go. Don't disturb us. Don't waste our time. Out, out now. Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, you are living. Release her family. Release her destiny right now. The noise maker. Out you go and don't waste our time. In Jesus' name, I set her free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray for those two women I don't know if there are here uh, two of them here, there's one of them um, I'm seeing one of them the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her, I don't know who that person is but there's one, please we have such people, we have to be fast if I mention your case once we give you one minute, there's no response, we have to move so that God can help us, please except if they are outside there then that's alright a, a married woman that need the fruit of the womb we have to pray for them right now praise the lord how many of us are trusting god for healing miracles in our bodies let me see your hands i know many of our mothers are in this category no matter what the case is who is stand up come on now. the power of god will come upon that person please make sure they are married though Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Um, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. But there is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You came here for program. I'm a student here. And you decided to. Where is your husband? He's in Kafancha. We okay. reside in Kafancha. Okay, look at me, madam. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. Believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can, I receive. Just shout it. I This God, ba. Let me tell you, that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? 
Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive. <laughs> There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. Want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Please put your hand on your Watch what happens to you. There is a name. Oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers. Kabataya. What God has joined together. I'm prophesying. That's why I said hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore I prophesy. Any stranger. Release what you are putting in her stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus. Release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister. Who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one. Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in How many years? Five years. No child. No child. My brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. Who oh, cancel it? Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Change my destiny. My destiny today. Destiny changer. You are a destiny changer. Come and change my destiny. My destiny hold on. today. Please don't just come out at will. What's it? Hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in Azarem Bauchi. Kiki Amata. That's a Sam Yembu. Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been coming with scourges. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See, this thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. 
Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on. Not, not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a womb. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen. <laughs> just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out. It's a disaster for a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry and get married and then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21 and this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, everything that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach, for every lady here and those watching online, I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Hold that baby. You, Ejimi, please give her that child. Just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation for this miracle. For this miracle. For this miracle. Daddy, sir, please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come, let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Yes, sir. She has put to bed in time, but none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit. As soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope. It eats the children. As in, it's the child sometimes most of the children will grow nine months you give birth then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die hold my hands where is she don't, don't cry don't cry where is she what's her name laddie 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 will speak to you lay your hand on your stomach Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is, I want to pray for you. Mama, good evening, ma. Please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Victor, Victor, Victor. This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job. The one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Henry. Mama, yes, sir. this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So yes. that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, you want to marry? 
He's planning for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's all right. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. True. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because, Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. Yes, sir. You bend down to wash and your back is pain. Exactly. Thank you, Father. In the I name of so. Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle Amen. for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help, Mama, you, in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you, Please, the, who is this? Eh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trousers removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Maybe we should help him now. <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? The proprietor of his school, sir. The pastor and the civil engineer by train. You own a school? I do, sir. Primary school? Nursery and primary. Nursery and primary? Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school? Seriously, sir. Is that true? I've been afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people are taking their children out of your school. And they are owing money. And they are owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, a few months, they want to leave. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? When I'm from state. You are a student here? Dark. Dark. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. Shidi. Chidi. Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son also. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that he's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you, you see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking how, sir, it's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you. That is going to bring restoration to your life. Supernatural restoration right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. Honestly, I'm not getting any prophetic word for you. But in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in prison. Have you started serving? Yes. In the place where? In the state of school. Let's pray for you. Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. Yes. From where? 
Zaria, I said to Father John, but since you have come out, let me pray for you. Huh? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? God. John. John, look at me. Please. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? It's when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um can I change your house, sir? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, Turen Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. Upon me on 66. 66. 1966. How old is that? This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open, but you need to be healed. And um, this thing started happening to you since soon you were about 17 years. Look at Yes. Sir. About 17 years. This thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense in the name of Jesus Christ. It must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. Please, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many, there are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please say it like you're serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare that every closed gate, every closed gate standing, before my destiny, standing before my destiny under this corporate anointing this corporate swing open now. Swing Lift open. your voice and begin to pray. Please, we are not just whiling away time. Pray, participate in the prayer. Some of us, that's what, is, that's what is affecting our lives. Every gate. Every gate. Every gate. Every gate. Every gate. Every gate. my finances Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, 
I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption. outside don't be tired you're working out your salvation with fear and trembling before we pray on the request I'd like you to pray and say in the name of Jesus 
How about now? Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. September. September. October. October. November. November. December. December. Hear my voice. Hear my voice. I, speak I speak to you. Deliver to my life. To my life. Only, blessings. Only blessings. No pain. No, pain. no, sorrow. no sorrow. No regrets. No Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare. A covering. Over me. And my family members. Wherever they are. The seal of the blood exempts them from tragedy. Listen, I shared some months ago. Hold on. I shared some months ago a vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say, I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and, loss. and, disaster. and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the body come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your prayers be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lights be fired. Pray, pray. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. Hallelujah. And we know that your seed your will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. We have a lot of content to share with you. 
So Father, we would entreat you to subscribe to I this use channel this as, a point as well of as like us. Hit that notification Lord, bell to receive so more updates from us. Here. Because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. Some it's going to make jobs. you a saying what some for marriages, that cries some for children, Thank you. some for breakthroughs, some for study um, scholarships, others for help, others for reconciliation, others for souls, others for financial prosperity and breakthrough. Others for restoration, some for deliverance, others for healing. Lord, I pray in the name that is above all names. We have a covenant of answered prayers with you. Therefore, Lord, arise as a mighty man and turn every prayer request to a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on facebook on twitter on any other platform lord in the name of jesus give them strange visitations strange visitations from tonight strange visitations and lord for every request that made it to this altar i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ and i pray answer everyone in the name of jesus On every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen. Most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here and for all the thousands following us online, connect, connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my morning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. 
Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, I, is it true that you will turn my life? I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In the last one month of my life, God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God. But there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear Him. Not just believe Him. I prophesy to someone here. In the name that is above all names. That flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here and it's no diving. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper, no finances, no grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years, but the grace to put it at work, I declare between now and next next month miracle service bring evidence bring evidence bring evidence bring results bring results in the name of Jesus anyone called jobless in this place that you have done everything to do including giving money to people and they have not brought jobs to you I don't know how God will do it but this mountain mover that can shake every mountain. I pray. May he give you not just a job. A miracle job. Miracle job. Hallelujah. Every family here. That is stuck in one place. You try to rise. Something brings you down. You try to rise. Something brings you down. Now I prophesy to you. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every embargo of bad luck upon your life. It works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind. I declare in the name of Jesus in a way you have never seen favor and help may you experience that throughout the month of September hallelujah a dimension of anointing a dimension of wisdom that you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus receive wisdom in the name of Jesus receive wisdom in the name of Jesus and I pray for you Everything that needs to be broken in your life. Habits and encumbrances that tie you down. I command that today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify. I curse that spirit right now. 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 Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak to you. Everything that makes money run away from your hands. Money has a spirit. You have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You would try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, 
by the mystery of divine supply may you hold something you have never held in your life before may you hold something you have never held in your life before may you hold an amount you have never held in your life before hallelujah two more prayers and we are done I pray for your spiritual life everything that is alive grows if you are not growing spiritually something is wrong and the measure there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth number one your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ number two your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom alongside their operation how to make them produce consistently I pray for you this month as we round up this month into the next month keys that your hands have never held spiritually Hold them right now in Jesus' name. Keys, mysteries that you have not known. Or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle. May God give it to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, this is the prayer that I pray for people with all my heart. He said, you shall anoint, listen. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons right and then he say you shall take some of your honor and put upon him how do you take honor and put upon him honor the spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity not by walking it honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent hallelujah I was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy, to quickly buy a laptop and proceed. And as soon as I stepped there, I entered, I saw all of them looking at me. They started jumping as if it was a crusade. Apostle Joshua Selman, I was so embarrassed. They ran, went and called their father, the owner of the place, uh, they call it Micro Manor in, in, in Kaduna. You know, and they were jumping and they looked, they said, ah, we, you have been blessed by your teachings, you know. God has lifted us. You can imagine the things that have happened. And they say, which laptop are you buying and all of that? And I looked at them. I had to just run away and go out. Because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business. They carry something that is so costly and give. Let me tell you, honor is more than money. Oh. Don't be deceived. Money is very finite. Honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you. They rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you, the true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know, the devil knows and heaven knows that this is like an address. It will cause good things to look for you. I want to pray for you. Honor makes your life easy. Otherwise, you will suffer for anything. Everything. You are in trouble. You pay for it alone. There is a mystery of honor. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you, my God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ay, 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 ay. In a dimension you have never seen. Or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension. Receive that mantle of honor. Receive that mantle of honor. Receive that mantle of honor. Receive.
that mantle of honor. Keep standing, everybody. I want to make an altar call now. Please, no moving around. Let's honor what God is doing. No sitting down. Just five minutes and we're done. Thank you so much for your patience. We stretched the time quite. Um, but I think that it's worth it. If you pay that much price and you come back with tear some testimonies, it's a wise baguette. There are still people under the anointing. God is still doing things. And even after the service, God is still going to be touching people. But very quickly, I want to make a call. There are people outside all the overflows, any of them. And there are people following us online. You are saying, man of God, I heard you speak. And whilst you spoke, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart and told me it's time to make a commitment or a rededication. For some of you, this is your first time making a genuine decision for Jesus. Others, you have made that decision, but you are rededicating yourself. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Make sure that you do not leave this place without making that decision. God bless you. There are people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, young and old. Clear the way for them. Please, if you are coming from outside, I want you to save time. Double up, hurry up and come. God bless you. Alana Bakasuchi Ata Alana Bakasuchi Ata Keep coming Alana Bakasuchi Ata Keep coming quickly please hold on thank you so much for coming men and women people who love god listen no matter what has happened in your life no matter what you have done i don't want you to stand here feeling guilty rebels don't come to god they run away from god so that you are here in his presence some of you are dedicating your life some of you are doing so for the first time it doesn't matter what category i want you to lift your right hand please if you are still coming join them very quickly lift your right hand and say after me very clearly you are not reciting a poem say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you died for me to prove your love for me and now i give my heart to you to prove my love for you I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm above sin. I'm above Satan. I'm above the flesh. In the name of Jesus, from today, I declare that I have the life of God. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I am victorious. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted, please. Father, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your wisdom. Let today be the beginning of, of great days in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything they have laid at your altar will remain there and never cling to their lives again. Open them up to a new dimension of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come into the lives of every one of these precious people. In the name of Jesus use them for your glory give them tearful testimonies in the name of jesus i pray amen thank you so much for making this decision now i'd like you to follow this gentleman and the lady waving their hands they will have your details in a minute hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you